And we want to take a look at one of the Paralympic sports a little bit closer, and that's para fencing or wheelchair fencing, as right. some people do call it. And our Brett Forrest actually spoke with some of the members of Team USA before they flew out to Paris. And it's not your first time covering this sport. Yeah, Bree, so Small World, I co-directed a documentary in 2020 about a wheelchair fencer trying to get to the Tokyo Paralympics. Of course, COVID happened, altered her journey, but she kept battling, and now she finally made it to Paris. And I reconnected with her and other fencers as they had one last prep here in Colorado Springs at the training center. So let me introduce you to Victoria Isaacson, or Tori, as she likes to be called, and the Team USA para fencers. There's so many different body types in wheelchair fencing that there's so many different challenges because everyone fences differently, everyone does something differently. Meet the Team USA para fencers who were training in Olympic City, USA one last time before they flew to Paris. Over here in Colorado Springs, just kind of getting the team together so we can work some kinks out, anything last minute. Tori Isaacson competing in her first Paralympic Games, falling just shy of qualifying for Tokyo. I kind of still can't really believe it. Like it hasn't really set in yet. It's just been like a long journey. I always look at sports as a marathon, not a sprint. For athletes like Tori and many others, she works full time in addition to her training, which is all largely self-funded. Tori also battles a degenerative disease called Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, but she isn't letting any of that stop her. Honestly, I'm the heaviest I've ever been, but I'm the healthiest I've ever been. I'm 165 pounds, but I'm 60% muscle. So it's the best I felt in a really long time and I'm glad that I finally have a body I'm happy with and that I can have success with as a competitor. For Colorado fencer Jotea Taylor, she was only recruited to the team two years ago, but she has her sights set high. So as a Marine, <laughs> I want gold, I want to win. But it's also just getting the experience and being prepared for LA 2028 because I still have a lot of learning to do. And if you've never watched fencing or wheelchair fencing before, these athletes say that's okay. It's a very dynamic and cerebral sport. It can maybe be a little bit hard to follow as far as the rules, but I think in the same way, that's true for plenty of sports. Offering a message for anyone who's never tuned into or paid attention to the Paralympics. The Olympics is great to watch, but if you've never seen a, any adaptive equipment, sports equipment, it'll open your eyes to the ability of individuals with disabilities. And that also makes you a better citizen because then you don't just see a wheelchair, you see someone's potential. And Bree, something I thought was interesting is all these athletes I spoke to, they're excited for Paris, of course, but they're already setting yeah. their sights on LA 2028. Of course, they're competing in front of a home crowd at those Paralympics, so let's cheer them on in Paris and hope to see them back in four years. They have some of the most inspirational stories. I can't wait to tune in for that.